Hey, crazy friends. Hey, guys. It's Jay and Francis with Find Your Crazy. Uh, we are a family of nine who travel full time in our fifth wheel RV with six Yay. of our kids traveling around seeing every national park. And today we're bringing to you another family tour guide for one of those national parks. In fact, it's a huge <laughs> national park. You might even say it's mammoth. mammoth. That's right, Mammoth Cave National Park. And today in this video, we're gonna share with you our must-sees for Mammoth National Park, as well as the surrounding area, including some pro family tips and some things that we learned on our experience there that we feel like will help you make a better experience when you visit with your family. Follow along. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about Mammoth Cave National Park and our family's experience when we visited there with our large family, which we hope will help you when you visit with your family. Again, throughout this video, we're gonna share with you our must-sees, the things that we saw while we were there that we feel like every family must see. And we're also gonna include our pro tips, the things that we feel like as families are absolutely the things that will help you have the best experience at your time in the national parks. So Mammoth Cave National Park uh, has only been a park for uh, since about 1940, but the amazing thing is it's actually the second oldest tourist attraction in the United States, only behind Niagara Falls, giving tours all the way back into the 1800s. So when you go there, you're visiting a long line, uh, or following in a long line of other visitors. The cave itself is unreal. Obviously, yes. the reason that you go there is for <laughs> the cave. It is, after all, Mammoth Cave. Yeah. National Park. Um, even though uh, in some of the research we found out that like something like 200,000 people that visit there every year don't visit the cave. So <laughs> that's a missed opportunity for sure. For so real. you need to visit the cave 100%. In fact, the cave is our number one and first must see Obviously. of the park. Yes. Uh, the cave itself is mammoth. Uh, in fact, a lot of people think that it may have gotten its name from the woolly mammoth, uh, the big <laughs> woolly furry elephant, but it's not. It literally got its cave because its that name big. because the cave is huge. Yeah. It's mammoth. Uh, in fact, at something like 400 miles of mapped wow. cave, it is incredible. by far the longest cave in the world. And it's like twice the length of the second longest cave in the world. So, I mean, yeah. it is unbelievable. And of those 400 miles, there's something like 41 that have been carved out by the National Park that you can go and visit uh, across several uh, yes, of the tours. Absolutely. Um, and so it is definitely something that you want to go uh, and you want to experience. But you need to make sure you're planning ahead. Yeah. Uh, we didn't realize uh, until we got there, uh, and we're going to share with you as our number one family tip That's is. That's right. So one of the things you need to make sure of is that you realize there's a cost to these tours. Yeah. So though getting into the National Park is free, the tours are definitely not. Right. And so you need to make sure that you head over to the National Park um, homepage, that you select Mammoth Cave National Park, and that you really do your research on which mm -hmm. tours that you want to see, yep. which one that you think are doable for your levels and and uh, fitness uh, comfort levels also the ages of your family and children there are some that are more challenging than others longer than others um, there are some that um, are at night and there's just different kinds that you need to make sure that you find the tour that's right or tours that is right for your family and for your budget and then the next thing you need to know is you need to make reservations for that so you've got yep. to not only know how much they cost but you need to buy those tickets ahead of time mm -hmm. they sell out very quickly and so you need 
to make sure, especially if you're visiting during a very busy time, that you know what time you want to go. You need to purchase those tickets ahead of time and you need to make sure that you allot time to get there and to spend as much time um, in the National Park as you can, but also a lot good time for your tours um, and all the things that you're going to want to do there. So make sure that you check your budget, you um, get your tickets, and you make sure that you allow plenty of time to do the tours that you want to do while you're here. That's right. Uh, and then once you've got your tickets, you're ready to head uh, down into that tour uh, mm -hmm. and be ready to be just uh, awed when you go down there. So uh, but one of the first things you're going to notice uh, when you walk down <laughs> into the cave is the temperature. Um, Mammoth Cave, the entrance varies a little bit, but the cave itself stays all the time at 54 degrees. Yikes. Uh, and so if you're cool natured, this is our second <laughs> pro family tip. Bring a jacket. Make sure that even though we went and it was sweltering humid yeah. and hot, and the idea of grabbing a jacket seemed like yeah crazy talk to our kids and to us but the moment that we stepped in we were glad we had them and yeah. so you need to make sure to grab a jacket but not only a, a jacket you need closed toed shoes to enter into the cave so make sure that you're not wearing your flip-flops that you really use those clothes covered shoes because it's dirty in there but also just for safety purposes uh, and so once you've got your jacket on and you're ready to head uh, down into the cave, um, be ready to just be amazed. Um, we've been in several caves uh, as a family, mm -hmm. uh, and Mammoth is um, just so different. Um, it's a dry cave um, in most of the parts right. of it. Yes. Uh, and so you don't see the big stalactites and stalactites, even though they do have some of those in parts of the caves. But for the most part, uh, it's just a dry cave. Um, but what's so impressive is, again, the size. Um, as you're walking through um, some of these corridors, uh, the main room rotunda when you go into mm. it uh you just breathtaking yeah it, you just can't get over how so big it is so big and so tall mm -hmm. and so beautiful and we did a video um a couple months ago about cathedral caverns oh, yeah. in um alabama north alabama mm -hmm. and that is a wet cave and so we went in with totally different expectations mm -hmm. and this one was just completely different like yeah. jay said so if you're used to those wet caves and things like that this is completely different and one you just have got to see because the sheer size and magnitude is amazing it is the size of the quarters you're walking Walking through, I mean, or like you could drive multiple semi trucks through them. Um, when we came out and asked our kids uh, what they thought about it, what was so impressive, that was the thing they kept saying over and over again was just how big it is, how big it is, how big it is. Yeah. Um, but as you're walking through, um, there are lots of great opportunities. Now, we uh, want to say that we went during uh, COVID. Uh, <laughs> and so actually, we went right after uh, the park had just opened right. back up. Um, and so when we went, there was actually only one tour going mm -hmm. on. And it was a self-guided, extended historic tour. So the normal historic guided tour that they have, uh, it was just self-guided. Um, and they had expanded a little bit so that you could go see mm -hmm. some things that you normally wouldn't see on that uh, one particular tour mm -hmm. which brings us to our first question for you guys we yeah. want your help um, down in the comments we want to go back um, because yeah. we only got to do that one tour, one tour. Um, and there's normally six seven eight different ones that are offered during different times of the day mm -hmm. uh, we want to know if you've been to mammoth what was your favorite tour what tour did you yes. do and which why one should was we do when we go back yeah, yeah. So yeah. which is the must do tour when we go back um, and so that others that are watching this video yeah. that might be going after they're starting to open up a little bit more right would have that information. Uh, but here is our next pro family tip if you go during COVID, and that is to ask, ask, yes. ask those park rangers. Uh, we walk through, um, again, it's self-guided, and so you're walking through, um, but throughout the entire cave as you walk along the paths, there were park rangers that were standing mm -hmm. there. Now, we walked by the first several, <laughs> Um, thinking they were just more um, traffic control. Well, and also maybe social distancing, making yeah. sure that people are you know doing the things they mm. need to do, uh, wearing their mask and all the things that they need to do. We just thought they were there for <laughs> yeah. crowd control. Yeah, <laughs> but then we got to, uh, I think it was about the third one, um, and our family had stopped to read one of the placards to, to learn a little bit about the, the um, history inside of the cave. Uh, and there was a park ranger sitting there. In fact, he was sitting over in the dark. I didn't even notice him. Um, and he said, hey, can I tell you about this area? And we said, well, sure. sure. And he started telling us way more, obviously, than what was on that so one little placard. Good. It was so great. And so from that point forward, I stopped at every ranger that was there. And I said, mm -hmm. tell me about this area. Yeah. And they just started telling 
stories and facts and things that were just so unreal. Right. And so our next pro family tip is ask those rangers yes. uh, because it's going to, especially if you go during COVID during the self-guided tour, um, it is going to make the tour. Uh, I mean, it would have been neat to go and to walk through the cave um, and not hear any of that, but it multiplied at times like 10 being able to get that information. Yeah, and if you have kids, I would say oh, yeah. having a person, um, an expert in their field, be mm -hmm. able to talk to the kids, yeah. share a funny story, tell something that um, no one else would have known. Yeah. It brings those placards to life. After a while of just reading kind of the more historical yeah. parts of the tour, a little bit more of um, just kind of a textbook kind of explanation, mm -hmm. um, you know, that gets a little bit, our kids are like mm -hmm. wandering off and we're trying to use this as road schooling. So those rangers, they really just oh, like man. bring it to life and it becomes more of a story time yep. and, and much more engaging than when we just read placard after placard after placard after placard because it was self-guided. We, yep. we didn't really have any other choices other than just to read those to learn about it. So Jay's right. It really, especially if you have children, for any of us, but for kids, it's really going to engage them and pull them in to have a real person tell them things that they would never know and stuff that's not even on the placards. Right. We learned so much from them. Uh, so once you get in there, Ask those rangers, but be prepared mm. to just step back and enjoy <laughs> an amazing opportunity. Once you emerge uh, from the cave, <laughs> don't stop. You're actually not done with Mammoth Cave National Park. While the cave is absolutely the number one must see and the thing that you have to do while you're there, it is not the only part of the park. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, the park is something like 52,000 acres, um, wow. which amazingly enough doesn't actually cover above ground all of the cave underground. Um, but within that, there are like um, 80 miles of trails that have been carved out uh, and you can go and hike on them um, and there's lots of different sinkholes to see just really really neat stuff um, to, to do once you come out enjoying those hikes for us um, our next must see is actually one of those hikes um, and it's a really easy one it's called the heritage loop trail um, and as the name would um, imply it has a ton of the history uh, of the cave and the people that went into the cave. In fact, there's a historic cemetery uh, right in the so middle of great. it. So great. Absolutely. And I would say that is a really great opportunity for you to engage the kids if you mm -hmm. have them. Um, even if you don't, it's a wonderful opportunity to just learn more um, about the cave because the cave is are their tours. Right. And so when you're done with your tour, you can't go back in um, unless you get another tour. Um, and so this is really your opportunity to learn even even more about the National Park itself. But for us, our kids do the Junior Ranger Program, mm -hmm. and I will tell you, you really need to participate yep. in that. And along this trail are several yep. stops um, of ways kids can learn that history mm -hmm. and um, just kind of what uh, it entailed about mm -hmm. the, the park, but also the cave. And, and it was really an opportunity to do a little bit more outside of just the self-guided tour. Mm -hmm. We kind of got out and learned more about nature and the trees
trees and the animals and so I would highly recommend you do the junior ranger program if you have kids there because you really do need to expand what you're learning because the cave is really isolated and if that's all you're doing you're not gonna you have a lot more time than you need and so you really want to get out and get on some of these trails and learn a little bit more about the park so I highly recommend that junior ranger program and the heritage loop trail to learn more about the cave uh, and the Heritage Loop Trail is super accessible. It actually starts from the visitor center uh, mm -hmm. and is a paved and our boardwalk trail uh, the entire time. It's really short. Um, anybody can do it. Yes. Um, and at the end of it, there's actually a really beautiful overlook uh, of one of the kind of um, valleys that's there. Uh, and so we would definitely recommend that. But while you're there at that overlook, if you are a little more advanced hiker, um, we would recommend that you take the Echo River Loop off the back of the Heritage Loop. Um, it goes down. Uh, and kind of switches back uh, back and forth down the hill and gets down to the bottom to one of those sinkholes that comes out of one of the caves. Uh, right. Really, really, beautiful. really neat, really beautiful, just really different um, uh, environment than a lot of the things that mm -hmm. we've hiked. Um, and it was so worth it. The kids love uh, going back and <laughs> forth down the switchbacks. But uh, again, you want to save this if you're yes. uh, more of an intermediate hiker because while going down was fun, <laughs> uh, coming back up those switchbacks um, was rough. a little bit uh, of, a, well, let's say we took more breaks coming back up um, <laughs> than we did when we were going down, but still very much worth it. Um, and so don't miss out on at least one of the tons of trail hiking opportunities that you're going to have in there. As amazing as Mammoth Cave is, even once you've done the tour and done a hike, even if you get lucky enough to go not during COVID and do multiple tours and a couple of hikes, the truth is it's only going to take your family a couple of days uh, at the actual national park mm -hmm. and to be able to do a tour and a hike that afternoon and then maybe the next day another tour and a different hike. After that, uh, you're pretty much going to have hit all the high points of the national park. But the good news is you're not done. Uh, our next family pro tip uh, is to visit another cave. Yes, uh, There are actually sure. lots of caves around Mammoth just because of the geography of the area. Uh, and so you want to go and visit some other ones because there are some very different ones there. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, just outside of the gates of Mammoth uh, is Diamond Caverns um, Cave. Yeah. Uh, and it's a great experience because it's more of that wet cave experience, more the stalactites, the stalagmites not near as big obviously um, but beautiful in a different way so mm -hmm. give you a different look uh, in fact that's where we stayed uh, yeah. is diamond caverns uh, rv resort uh, it's right across from that a uh, great place we if you're rv we really did it's great for kids mm -hmm. it's really big and spacious and, and you can't get much closer to the park right it's wonderful yeah. and if you're a thousand trails member hey we're on the this the bottom level camping pass and it's included yep. so no matter what tier you have you can stay there for free and enjoy not only that uh, mammoth cave national mm -hmm. park but you can enjoy like jay said the other things that are yeah. around there that could take you a few more days to really make your trip more kind of complete yeah. but 
If you're gonna do another cave, while Diamond Caverns is impressive, what we wanna recommend is our next must-see, and that is Lost River Cave. Yeah. That's right, it's a river so great. in a cave. <laughs> um, most crazy thing that we had seen, and one of our kids' favorite experiences yes, when we were for there. for sure, absolutely. Um, it is uh, an amazing, um, it, it's, it's so unique um, because uh, you actually take a boat back up into the river. Yeah. In the cave. Into the cave. And so it's a boat tour back up in the cave, which is so unusual. Yeah. Um, but the history of the area um, of the little cave is so unique. Um, Guinness World Records actually <laughs> listed it um, as the longest, uh, the shortest, deepest river in the world because uh, it only goes back up into the cave. It's not uh, a long tour No, at all. no, no. About half a mile. Um, but the blue holes, which are the holes that kind of surface up and then they drop back down into the cave that feed it. Uh, one of them something like 500 feet deep. Yeah. And so it's, it's almost as deep as it is long. Um, and there's a good current there too mm -hmm. because oh they said that people would come right outside where the cave tour actually is. Right outside is where you start your tour mm -hmm. with your um, with your ranger. And so we were out there and she showed us this very calm, looked very shallow um, like a little pool. Swimming pool. Yeah. And something my kids would totally swim in. And I would absolutely say, go for it. Looks mm -hmm. great. This thing had such a current that it would pull people under and it was so deep that it would drown them. Yeah. And it was pretty terrifying to people because they didn't understand kind of the dynamics of what was going on. And so during the Civil War, they actually <laughs> called it the bottomless pit. Yeah, they um, had because no idea. They, had, they accidentally, as they were coming through, like wrecked some <laughs> wagons in it and yeah. they got sucked, sucked down, down like and wagons never came and back everything. Up. And so Crazy. they would throw, um, they would put rocks <laughs> on rope and yeah. throw them down in there thinking that it would never hit the bottom, they'd run out of rope, but it's because it was sucking it further yes, along in the current, yes. but they thought it was bottomless. Um, but that's just really part of the really neat history uh, of the cave is uh, Native American Indians um, hid and hunted in there. Um, the Civil War, both sides actually used it um, as a staging area at yeah. different times. Uh, the outlaw Jesse James um, <laughs> hid there yeah. um, from the, um, the authorities at one point. Uh, and then one really neat thing is back in the 30s, um, they converted it into a nightclub, the mouth yes. of it into a nightclub. So cool. Um, and so there's a dance floor, a bar, a um, Beautiful stage, Beautiful chandeliers, chandeliers that are all over right lights. Right there at the entrance. So amazing. In, fact, in the 30s, anybody that was anybody in entertainment um, went there. Yeah. Even though um, the club would only hold uh, about 200 people, uh, the draw was the cool air coming mm -hmm. out of the cave. And so like back in the 30s, it was the <laughs> only was air, air conditioned club in the world. Yeah. Uh, so it just, it's just really, really you neat. Gotta it's not, go. It doesn't take You've a long go. time. Yeah. Um, and the kids. Yeah. Our kids continued to talk about it. I mean, getting on that boat and then slowly going back up into yeah. the cave. One so morning, neat. I would tell you, just a little piece of advice. Um, there are some tight squeezes. So right as you're coming in, there is a very, very low, low hanging ceiling. ceiling. And so we were literally... We had to bend over, sometimes shoulder to knees. Um, so if you have back issues or claustrophobic issues or just being in tight squeezes makes you really, really uncomfortable, you really need to be aware that you're going to experience a few of those. There are several, um, not not a lot, but there's at least two, um, and then you got to come back out. And so there are um, areas where it just is a little uncomfortable. Um, and it's just kids, that one, yeah, it's just that yeah. one section when you go in, yeah. um, and it's only about... Gosh, it's probably only 10 feet, right. but the boats aren't moving fast, um, and you do have to do it twice because you, you got to get out. And so there are some also some limits as far as limitations, as far as uh, you know weight and things like that mm -hmm. that can fit in the boat. So you do need to be aware of that. You do need to check your guidelines and just make sure that this is the tour for you and your family. There are some areas that are a little bit dark, but when you go in, it is lit up. So it's not all dark. It is no, lit no, no, no. up. It is really beautiful, and we really enjoy this. It's so unique. So unique. Unlike anything that. Jay and I or our kids had ever experienced. Yeah. I would say it's 100% a must-see. Oh, you absolutely. really need to kind of compare the two, but just getting on a boat and kind of going off, you feel like you're going into a lost world. Mm -hmm. Like it's just like you're headed out. So kind of meets Jungle Cruise yeah. <laughs> meets the caverns. And think about that. It's really awesome. Really
Mall Mammoth Cave is a lot about the caves, and then the other caves around there. There is more to do than just caves. So <laughs> yeah. if you've got one or two members of your family that aren't as excited about the caves, um, our little Jojo is not the biggest fan of caves. No, it's a little scary for him. Um, so if you've got one of those, you're still in luck. Yeah. Um, because there are lots of other touristy things to do uh, right around the towns, uh, right around Mammoth. Uh, and our next must-see is... Well, for a lot of our kids, it even outshadowed uh, the yes, cave, yes. and that is Dinosaur, dinosaur World. World. <laughs> it is exactly what You'll it sounds like. You'll see the giant um, T-Rex on the interstate as you're coming in. He's enormous. You cannot miss it. It's crazy. Um, they basically there's uh, I mean there's a, there's there's a museum and a gift yeah. shop and some um, really a cool video stuff tour, there. some really neat stuff, a playground right at the beginning. But the real draw is that this big loop trail that kind of goes back up through the woods, yes. and throughout it they have these life size true story. Um, Life size replicas <laughs> of these dinosaurs, um, and it was just so neat. They have these plaques about each one of them. We learned, um, so, we learned much, so much, so much um, things that we dinosaurs we thought we knew the names of that we, that were, we, wrong we were wrong on. Um, it just was really, really fun. The kids loved what was around each mm -hmm. corner. You learned about their habitats, but also oh, yeah. it's a fun opportunity, especially yeah. if it's hot outside. It is shaded. Yeah. It is nice and cool. Um, there's also a fun little, like Jay said, a museum mm -hmm. where you can go in and see some actual um, fossils. fossils. Yeah. Um, when you come in, they give your kids a little sack of of uh, the fossils that are found there in Kentucky. And it's just a really fun little place. But our kids absolutely uh, said it is a top must-see yeah, so from the kids. A must-see for us is absolutely dinosaur. Number one, did your parents put you up to this? Yes. <laughs> we did not. Which snack is your favorite? Chicken nugget, cheeseburger, or a salad? Cheeseburger. Um, a salad. Chicken nugget. Salad. Chicken nuggets. Holy salad. Number two, what would be your favorite superpower? Super strength? Super speed or super smell? Super speed. Super strength. Strong. Ooh. Fat. Super speed. 
probably super speed. Next question. How do you prefer to spend your time? I probably know the answer to this. <laughs> In a library, at the pool, or hanging out with your friends? Library, hands down. <laughs> hanging out with friends. In the pool. Library. Or pool. You like books, don't you? Go to the pool. Hanging out with friends. Is your favorite animal a rhinoceros, an eagle, a giraffe, or a shark? Eagle. A dolphin. So, dolphin? No, I'm a shark. An eagle? Pick a mythical creature. Is it a dragon, a mermaid, or Bigfoot? A Bigfoot. Dragon. Um, a mermaid. Dragon. <laughs> Ooh, a dragon. Dragon. Ooh, a dragon. Ooh, um, probably a dragon. How would your friends describe you? Loud, calm, energetic, or friendly? Um, uh, maybe friendly. Energetic. Friendly. You are friendly. I'm uh, friendly. You are very friendly. Loud. Probably calm. You are a velociraptor. Guy, you're a spinosaurus. Ruthie, <laughs> <laughs> you're a Trianosaurus Rex. You're a T-Rex. Okay, guess what you are? You're a Spinosaurus. Christopher, you are a Trianosaurus Rex. Yay. <laughs> you are ooh, a Stegosaurus. That's our first Stegosaurus. My favorite dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, you are because you are really quite harmless. You're never in a rush and you enjoy keeping things simple. I think that's about right. I think so too. All right. So we hope you found this family tour guide for Mammoth Cave National Park helpful. Um, all of our must-sees um, are things that we loved and enjoyed and we believe you will as well. And all those pro family tips are there uh, to help you maximize uh, that experience and learn from some of the mistakes even we made. Uh, all of the links to everything that we've talked about uh, are down in the description so you can click on everything there to get a little more detail. And don't forget to answer our question in the comments. We want to hear from you. We read and we respond to all of our comments because we want to hear what your family pro tips are and your must-sees are for Mammoth National Park. So if we've missed something because of COVID, let us know which us tour know, yeah. you would have gone on or have gone on. And then also tell us anything else we've missed at Mammoth National Park because we only saw a little bit. You may have some must-sees for us. Uh, and then you can also subscribe to our channel um, if you want to see our adventures to all the national parks, but also all the things that we do in between. Uh, there's lots of neat things yeah. to see between the national parks. Uh, click on that subscribe button and you can follow along with our family every single week and if you want to see more of our family tour guides for the national parks just click on uh, that playlist link and it'll take you to all the ones that we've visited so far see you next time bye guys